So welcome back friends. As promised, today we're going to be installing the awning on the adventure van. Like many of you, this is going to be a first for me. I don't know, I, I've never done this before, don't know anything about it. Um, and I was really kind of at loggerheads on how to, uh, or which one to get with the awning, because there's, you know, this van market is so hot right now that uh, there's all these different manufacturers springing up. Uh, but it seemed to me the more, the folk that, folks that I spoke with in the know uh, all pretty much agreed that um, the Fioma, Fiamma, Fiamma from Italy uh, is uh, a pretty hard one to beat. So let's unpack it and take a look at it. Wow, I have never seen one of these up close, but this is beautiful. Wow, I've got to say this is, wow, this is beautifully made. It's just gorgeous. This is the Fioma F45S, 10 feet wide. About 40, I think it was about 40 pounds or so uh, of weight. And looks like we've got three support stickers on there. That's where it's going to need to go. So Illumines uh, provided these, uh, these brackets right here because we will be mounting it on the uh, Illumines rack there on the adventure van. Um, and this is supposed to be the bracket for the F45. So let's open up the hardware and see what uh, Fioma is included. Fioma. I don't know why I keep saying Fioma. Fiamma. Sorry, Italy. Everything's pretty straightforward. So there's three mounting brackets, these aluminum brackets right here. And if you were imagine, you're gonna, these, have, these are the cleats. And then the awning will fit onto that and then screw up and secure it from the bottom. So if you were going to mount these like on a flat surface, like a maybe traditional motorhome, those bolts would go through there uh, like that. So since we are mounting it, clamping it to the awning with the, these aluminum plates here, um, we have a little different system. So the bolts are too long, so I've mounted these up here. We had to go cut these down. We've got one left here. We'll do this together. So uh, let me show you how I'm gonna cut these guys off here. These are two of my favorite tools in the shop. I bought these together years ago. They were not, they were not, I mean, they were the Mac brand, but they were their, uh, I don't know, they were some sort of a knock. They were, they were cheap, they're made in Taiwan. <laughs> so, but they've worked really good. Oh, if you don't have these, um, these make a great pair. This is a little cu a cutting wheel. And, and again, these things are not that expensive. You could probably find the pair on Amazon, you know, not snap on or anything, but probably, you know, around $100 or so. But this has a cutoff wheel, and then this is a roll lock, a little buffer polisher. And, and I, they're so handy for so many things, especially like these little, cutting these little stainless steel deals. Another issue that came up with these uh, carriage bolts, a carriage bolt, if you don't know, is uh, got the round head on it and a square shoulder that fits into a square hole. So if you have something that you can't get behind it to tighten, that's what a carriage bolt, that's one of the applications for it. But the Illumines brackets are, see how they're not quite drilled right? See so how they come together and squeeze the bolts together? So what I was, do, what I was doing, we, the holes are already there, so we can't move the holes, is just making them to the next size. Um, so if we could just drill those out. Next size that gives a little bit of room there. Now when we put it on, we'll have, see how that's straight now? I don't typically cut these off uh, beforehand. Some people cut them off beforehand. I don't do it because, uh, especially when you're dealing with stainless steel, is it messes up, what is the wrong size? It messes up the threads. Interesting that they gave us stainless steel uh, carriage bolts, but they gave us cadmium nylock, nylock deals. That's kind of low rent there. My sockets are not deep enough to go all the way through there, so I'll just run them up there to whoops, save a little bit of time. Now we'll have to finish it the old-fashioned way here. Just finished up mounting the three brackets there. You can see the cleats, the one in the center. There was one that was a little bit narrower and I'm just assuming that that's the one in the center um, and then on the outside. So they just clamp on right there like that. And uh, we should be able to set it up. So once we 
once that, once that sits there on that cleat, I'm assuming that these bolts, there'll be bolts that will go up there and secure it from keeping it from coming out. So uh, let's see if I can figure out a way to lift this thing up there by myself and put it in place. I'm guessing this thing, I think if I remember, was about 40, 45 pounds. This would be a lot better with two guys here, wouldn't it? Boy, that's tricky. I guess I should have got my ladder closer. Is it hooked on there? Shouldn't let go of it. I'm assuming. Oh, I can, oh, yep, it is now. Good morning, everyone. Well, it got dark on me last night, so I had to pack it in, uh, but we'll uh, finish up out here today, this morning. So I got everything mounted, and as you guys saw, as it, the, the awning hooked onto the cleats, and then it's retained by these uh, stainless bolts, uh, three of those. So that's only, just keep it from flipping out. So uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's open it up and uh, see how it looks. So the dilemma you might run into with these awnings is, do you want a powered awning? or do you want one that's um, a manual crank awning? So I talked to my dad about this and he, he's like, get an electric one or, or get, get the power one or you're just not gonna use it, it's just too much hassle. And so I went and I, I kind of was gonna go that route and I went and looked at them and just the extra weight and complexity and the wiring and the, the fragile nature of them, kind of what it seemed to me, the ones that I looked at, um, I went, I just went with the, with the manual. Now, if you want to, and, and I guess what made the decision easier for me was uh, I, I opened one up and it was, I thought it was very simple. And if, if that's not enough for you, you can add the motor to it. Uh, so you can make it automated. So there is that, but that was a decision that uh, I made on this. So this is the handle uh, for deploying the deal. I guess one of the downsides to having a manual crank awning is you've got to store the handle uh, somewhere. So they gave me these clips here and I just screwed them in there. I, I don't know if they'll stay there. It's kind of a temporary deal. I think I'll ultimately be putting some storage little cubbies in there, but until then it's fine. So this here is the strut uh, for the rain. I'll, I'll show you here in a minute, but this is the, here's the handle for deploying it, but it seems to fit there nice. It doesn't appear like it's gonna, or it doesn't seem like it's gonna rattle. And that will probably be there for a long time, actually. There's no question, it looks, it looks really smart. Looks the business, as my British friends would say. Uh, you don't even notice it's up there. So this hand crank deal, you can see it just goes into, uh, into that T-handle. And what I saw in the video is you run it out a third of the way or so until you can reach the poles. The two support poles snap up here and they are pretty self-explanatory. One thing that I liked as I drove it, I drove it around the block here, it doesn't seem to rattle. I was, I was worried it was gonna rattle and make a bunch of racket. Now I guess we can just straighten the, the poles. Um, height wise, I guess we could go whatever height we want, but I guess as long as we can walk under it, it seems reasonable. They did throw in some nails, so you could stake that down if you needed to. So this is the rain strut. It's just, I mean, it's basically similar to the pole. You just loosen it. Looks like it's got some clips on it. So you hook that clip here. They don't even snap. It's just kind of held in with gravity, which is nice because you wouldn't be able to get up there anyway. I guess you could tighten that wing nut. And then there, now we have, oh, I see what it is now. So that water's not gonna pool up in there. It will run off. We could lower the, one of the legs on the low side like that. And that's gonna cause all of the, the water or light snow, I guess you're not gonna put snow up there, a water to come off. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Just don't forget to take that loose when you roll it up, I guess, huh? This is gonna be really nice for the family in the summertime. Mrs. W, she's a fair, fair skinned redhead, so she, uh, is always hiding from the sun, so this will be very welcome for, for her. And it just gives you probably about an eight, yeah, it's about an eight by 10 uh, living area. I even saw online, they make a whole, 
you can turn this into a whole building. They got this like kit with the walls on it, but uh, it's super expensive and it'd probably take a half hour to install. And I don't know, maybe for some applications that would be good, but it seems like a lot of work and expense to me. Uh, but very, very nice. So let's see in closing, let's see how long it takes to put everything away. Count it down, three, two, one. We'll bring these guys in. I'm not rushing here, it's just a, this is real life. Oh, good grief, look what I did after I just told you don't do it. <laughs> I am not a smart man. All right, normally I wouldn't use that. Wasn't expecting that to be there, there we go. Bonus footage for those of you who are interested. Uh, there was a couple things I didn't show there. So on the rear lights, I'm still working on the placement, but I think what I'll do is I'll mount two here off the back. So those are the two of the floods. So that'll be really nice for backing up. Now, I don't know about the other ones, but I would imagine we'll put one off of each side uh, for scene lighting. So maybe, I, I just have to see how bright they are at night before I know if I want to mount that underneath of the awning it might be might be too bright to live with the uh, top bar uh, or the double LED there right there from armored you can see it fit on there nice it was it was all she wrote it wouldn't have fit if it would have been a half inch maybe an inch wider it was just perfect so that's up there on its feet um, and adjustable but it looks great so nothing's wired up yet but it is installed that's pretty much where that's going to go but so far, so good. 